me and Joe, we both joined uh, like literally late February of 2020, and then Corona started happening by, right then. Um, shows were out the window, touring is out the window, and um, uh, we all talked. And um, we, you know, some bands just wanted to kind of pack up, go home, and that's perfectly fine. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to keep going. So we figured, what can we do? And we saw that TikTok was a platform that was getting a lot of um, press for being great for new bands, especially independent. You know, it was a free way to promote yourself in any manner you really wanted to, whether it's doing some stupid trends or just throwing your music on there. So we all decided, you know, we need to be content creators. We need to be influencers. We need to find a new way to stay alive in a world that doesn't have a um a thriving music industry because it was all shut down um and we all took to that there are a lot of bands that kind of decided they didn't want to pursue that um because it can be cringy i'm not gonna lie tiktok is cringy but it works um i'm really happy that we hopped on it we saw um i remember when we started um we released sick of it all and then i was losing my mind during the pandemic so i was like let's go on tiktok so i posted sick of it all and it had like a little mini viral and then all of us were like oh shit, something's here. Because we went up, I don't know, at that time, like 300 followers overnight on Spotify. And we're just like, shit, that's great. So we all started posting um, in any creative way that we could think of uh, using Sick of It All because that was our newest song at the time. Tristan posted it overnight one night and it just went viral. And it sat at around, it stopped around 860, 100,000 views, like almost, I think 112,000 likes. And it just, it really made our career and um that gave us the foundation and the mo and the uh, momentum to just keep going there's plenty of times we posted and it didn't work we got yeah. like three views on it and then it it worked um you know yeah. it's that's what us musicians creatives do we keep putting effort in we put 110 percent into everything hoping that something catches fire yeah we we really work hard on putting together like a, our aesthetics our image and uh we have like a whole like lore to the band we're starting to build with our characters like Baku and like Heart Eater. We want to uh, like engage our fans and and build something together with them, um, which we thought would be really cool. We love um, we love all the different types of like uh, anime or like uh, the band like the Gorillas. Like it really influences us. Um, the main point is just to do something unique and special. And um, when you see something like Sick of All is going viral, that's when we decided we're like, okay, let's attack TikTok like never before. Like all six of us have like uh, TikTok accounts now and we're posting our videos as uh, as consistent as we can. Even though we have like, um, like some of us had full-time jobs, someone's had part-time jobs, someone, Vince is like a full-time producer. Like that Sick of All TikTok, I just got, uh, got out of work. It was like 11 at night. I didn't want to post it. I posted it on the whim, and I remember, uh, I, I remember, I actually just like fell asleep instantly. Then I woke up and then I saw a message from Jared, and I'm like, "You did it!" And I thought something was wrong. I was like, "What did I do?" <laughs> and then I saw it. it was like uh, my phone was, like caved in with these messages and like blowing up insane. So like, um, yeah, our goal is to like attack this with everything we have because we're passionate about it. It the music. The image, the the world we're building, and it means a lot to us. So we're hoping it will mean a lot to someone else. Shoot for the stars and your land on the moon. Um, because like the higher you shoot for and the more you believe in yourself and the more positive like energy you give yourself into, whether that's like songwriting or like or marketing your music, it, it comes a long way to keeping that mentality. Because um it, it takes some time. For us it took us uh over like I think it was like a year and a half or two years before we had a song that actually like really worked um, and got a lot of attention. So it takes that grinding and believing in yourself and um, yeah, just like never give up, you know? I just think about, I think back with like my history as a musician, like I started playing music when I was 13. I failed so many times. I sucked so many times. And there's so many things that you try that just don't work. Sometimes it's timing. Um, you know, one thing that really works for us is, you know, we, we watch the trends, um, you know, as musicians, I'll say this cause it used to be a bad habit of mine. I would not pay attention to what was popular, what was mainstream, but you know, you can learn a lot from that. You don't have to like the music. You can learn what they're doing. You can learn trends. You can also try to get above the trend and start playing, you know, what's going to be popular a few months from now. 
I feel like we got very not just lucky, but also like we saw that pop punk was coming back and we just made sure that we had enough content to keep writing that as it goes more and more in mainstream. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to like try and doubt you and try and put you down because like you're trying to make your dreams come true. You're trying to build that stable career, that stable like mindset within your own craft. Don't listen to them. Um, always listen to yourself. Um, if you think that a song is good, promote it, show it, share it. Um, and that's the only way that you're really going to get that recognition is if you just continue to share your work, continue to do what you have to do to, in order to be you because your work is you, your passion is you, your career is you. So be you. We all started working like part-time jobs, like Freddie. Uh, he was working at, like Walgreens, so he's still working at Walgreens. Um, I went from like Staples to Costco to wherever else I could get a job. And um, just me personally, I would, uh, I don't advise doing this, but I would put like whole, like, my whole paychecks into like studio time because like you gotta believe uh, in your business and and your craft and and do whatever you can to make it happen. And and not let anyone like tell you, oh, you're you're just wasting your time. You're not going to make it as a musician. Look at like the percentages. You just got, if you believe in yourself, that comes a lot of way in like manifesting uh, what's going to happen. And I know everyone else was still working and putting like, uh, like, like paychecks too. So you got to find the right group of people too. Um, but you can still do it on your own. It's just like the amount of work you, you need to do. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I remember, I think I put in like my whole, everything you had in my savings account for like a video that we don't even have up anymore. <laughs> Oh, yeah. promoting it spend the money to do the recording uh spend money or take the time you got to take the time to like build up your craft and get good at your craft there and there's people who like, are already there but like to be honest me i i'm still bad but like i work my way up to being like decently bad you know where people like kind of enjoy the music you know what i'm saying so like you gotta spend the time to get better we work shitty jobs that we hate. Um, and you know, everyone, you know, if everyone here is creative, whether they're doing film, doing music, marketing, anything, you know, you go and you work a shitty job, you come home and you work on what you want to do. And the dream is to leave that. Yeah. Um, and you know, it comes down to a lot of sleepless nights, early mornings, and, um, just believing in yourself. Yeah. Um, like it's, it's that, it's that basketball mentality almost or that Kobe mentality. I would say you were the first one to show up, you're the last one to leave. Um, you put everything that you have into your craft like for me like there are some times i'm like yeah i don't know if i'm gonna pay my bills but i know this video gotta get paid for so i'll work i'll work my bills out later i need this video done um and then like even vice versa is like there are times where i just don't have it and the band helps me out that's just having a team um i think that's another thing too like having a solid team a solid support system really helps that and um we have um we know we do a lot of things in-house and that's not just with the six of us um you know we have jessica griffith who does our image our uh promos our bts for videos we have evan draper who does um our music videos um who has a team behind him that are absolutely incredible um we have andy and andrew that help us with um songwriting you know with production yeah so i mean you know as a um you know what whatever create creative path you're doing you know build a team around you that works with you um everybody gets something out of it as well um there's nothing more powerful than building a community that is going towards the same goal yeah it's like everyone always makes fun of those like neighborhood neighborhood creatives i like to call them mm -hmm. like little homie down the street who just got a camera who just wants to work it's like work with that person like help them build up because they can help you build at the same time it's like so never like put any never let an opportunity go go by i would say would you prefer to stay independent you think or is the ultimate goal to get signed and if so do you have the label in mind that you think would be awesome to be on yeah i mean um to be honest it's just all about um not getting screwed over in the long run because right, label right. Oh, will approach you and they'll be like um like depending if you have leverage like luckily enough we were able to have some leverage uh when like labels approach us and everything but um yeah labels will approach you and just be like hey 
you, you're going to get 7% in, in royalties. We'll take everything else. Um, here's like a small amount of money and we're still owning all your catalog and everything like that. Um, so you just, you got to wait for the right moment. Like even in the, like, I think even before Sick and Fall, like some labels were like approaching us um, just to see what's going on. Um, so so now the best thing for us is just to uh, to figure out what the best fit is. And we really want to keep as much ownership as possible and find the right team behind us because that's more important who get the vision, who get the long-term goals because we have a lot of lofty goals that we want to set out to do in the long run. So, yeah, speaking of Spotify specifically, um, once you approach, like, uh, certain numbers, labels literally, like, have, like, they'll reach out to you and stuff. So we built up our numbers all the way to where it stays at 130, 120 now, right? 140, if we're back up yeah, there, about, like, yeah, 140. There. So um, as labels were approaching us, uh, I think um, it was, like, after after Sick and Vol. And, we, like, I should backtrack. We were at, like, 90 or 80. Um, and then we released Love Me and the Dream Eater uh, mixtape. Um, and we just kept on building while li labels were approaching us. So we kept on building and building and growing, had more viral videos, had more content. And, and that gave us a position to show, oh, these guys do everything. They don't really even need us, you know? We, we don't need a label to do what we need to do. We have everything a label would do for us. Um, like Freddie said, you got to think of it like you're on a label already. The labels, to be honest, like some labels might hold your hands, but a label's not going to hold your hand uh, and help you succeed like that. You have to put in the work still while you're on the label because there's so now you're in a different realm of things. Like you're you're competing against bigger artists in your label for release dates. You're you're doing all these things, but yeah, it's just you gotta you gotta have the numbers. That's just the truth, and you gotta have um, the quality content. And uh, and to be honest, like ninety percent of this is image unfortunately um at least that's what the labels say um i don't believe in that i think a, a great song is a great song and it'll and it will go as far as it go but like you have the image the the numbers behind you and the, and the song writing behind you too um the only thing i'll add to that like we were talking about earlier with building a team you know when we talk to labels and managers really anyone in the industry you know have all your goal like as a band or even as a solo artist if you're doing it solo have your goals in mind um, know where you want to be in a month, in five years, in 10 years. Um, have them all written down. Um, build your in-house team. All these people that talked to us, they were just blown away that, you know, we knew what we wanted. We, like Tristan said, we didn't need to have a label. We were self-funding. Most people sign to labels because they need funding, but we were able to fund ourselves, thankfully. Um, so the leverage definitely comes from knowing your worth, um, writing amazing music, um, having buzz around you already and being able to sustain yourself because then you can start talking about being in a partnership rather than being in a 360 deal where someone's just going to take from every avenue. Um, that way you can still make some money while the label gets you to the next level and they make money as well. Never sign a 360 deal. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> it's not going to work out. <laughs> and also like if a label, if you ever sign to a label, still work as you're an independent, like as you're an independent artist, like just work harder. Um, just because just because you're on the label doesn't mean that like like you can just coast very easily. Um, you get on the label, like Tristan said, you're up against the big dog, so you have to work extremely hard. Like we're not there, we're not on labels yet, but we are on that mindset already of okay, we have to work even harder now, just because we have this this light on us now. So we have to continue working, continue building, continue creating so we can finally get to those levels and then one day surpass those levels as well. We want to uh, have a number one album on Billboard. We want to uh, have Grammys um, shoot for like the rock Grammys or alternative Grammys. And then um, we w basically two bands we look up to are Bring Me the Rising and the 1975 on how to build uh, these amazing um, like like these amazing art uh combined with like the staple of like what is their business essentially like they make these amazing albums and amazing projects whatever but it makes such a mark on the world when it drops so we just want to have that ability to share our music with as many people as possible and i think those two bands are representative we where we want to be in 10 years for sure
especially with Bring Me the Horizon, man. You got to think they're they've gotten so big, but yet they went back to in house stuff. I mean, like they shoot their own videos, they do their own productions now. So it's like they they did the whole all right. Let's go to producers. Let's go to videographers. Let's get all this done to let's hone it in. We have friends who can do this now. <laughs> I yeah. think let's let's yeah. actually do this together. Let- so. You guys, you know, uh, obviously are like extremely hard workers. Uh, me, myself, like I want to be a musician, but I'm also a full time student and I'm also like, you know, at a job. Um, and I feel like doing all that, trying to uh, trying to balance everything sort of like burns the stick at both ends. How do you guys deal with burnout, I guess? And like, you know, uh, if you guys have dealt with burnout, how would you how do you guys deal with it? I was in the same situation you were in like a year ago. Uh, working at uh, working a full time job and at school, um, yeah, basically I would make sure I set time, um, away from everything, or like do it early in the morning before school. But um, dealing with burnout, um, I had the best thing is to do just like work through it. Um, one of my favorite um artists, uh, Joshua Hami of Queens of Stone Age, he said, uh, he said like he said that he said like you can't. You can't just sit and wait on what uh, on writer's block or sit and wait on your burnout or you're tired. You got to just keep on working through it. And that, uh, that's honestly like the best advice I can give you because it really helped me in the long run. It helped Freddie for sure to like with us in our like songwriting and musician journey journey. People are going to have like different opinions on that. And I agree with Tristan. I mean, you know, being creative and, you know, we're freelancers, you know, no one's. But, you know, we're not clocking into a job. We make our own hours. And the more we put into it, the more we get out of it. Uh, That's what we want. Um, but, you know, like, I, I I, try to, I run around all day doing a bunch of shit. And what I've learned about myself is, you know, it's great to have the mentality that we've all shared. You know, keep driving, keep pushing, keep, but you also, you know, mental health is important. Um, some days you're going to be burnt out and you're going to be trying to work on, you said a musician, work on a song that you can't get it the way you like it. And take a break, um, you know, rest, you know, take care of yourself and you'll, those ideas will come back. Yeah. Like don't be afraid to take a break, but always remember that you have to go back. Exactly. Don't, don't let that idea just float away. Yeah. With, uh, when sick of it all came out, like when, when Tristan sent me the, the instrumental of sick of it all, this was the fastest song I've ever written. I, it was about 15 minutes. I sent it back to him. I was like, here you go. Yeah. And he was like, yo, this is fire. <laughs> um, and that was just because I didn't think about it. I didn't, I didn't let my mind over, overwork itself or overthink itself. I kind of just did it. Like, like you said, like how a kid would just pick up Legos and just build this castle or build a plane and just all of a sudden make this beautiful story out of Lego planes. Like, it's the same thing. Like, just letting your mind go and just letting it, letting everything flow naturally to you. Something that uh, Andrew Wade, uh, he's a producer of like a Day Remember, um, like Wage War, some other big artists, Josh A. He gave me some like really good advice. Um, and this is just speaking like as a songwriter and, and like as a musician. It's basically, um, and tell me if I'm wrong, Freddie. It's like, it's like 50% of like the music you wanted to make, um, 20% what's popular, and then and then like 50% of what you can do, you know? Did I say that right, Freddie? It, it, yeah, the 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 circle, the pie chart. Yeah. Yeah, I saw I saw you posted that, and that pretty much like really helps. That helped me because like I like to be weird, and like there was a moment where I was like, man, I can't really be too weird. No one's gonna yeah. want that. And then I saw them like, I was like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, we, we weren't doing anything anyways. I was like, who cares what how this is anymore? Let me just write what I want. <laughs> I think it's really important to love what you're doing. That's what drives us. I mean, I'm sure there's people in the industry that, um, you know, they don't really want to be doing it, but it gets them money or it puts them in some, you know, maybe it's stability or something. Um, but um, I guess the other thing I was going to add to it was just like, Sometimes things other than a need to do it or because you love it drive you like like there's a new song that's going to come out on the next uh, mixtape that I wrote in dedication to my mother when she passed away. And, you know, music is ther- therapy to a lot of people. So I guess it's not like I wanted to write a song like that, but I needed to. And, you know, it's that dedication of maybe something greater than yourself or somebody else that makes you also pursue music. So I guess 
I don't know if that made sense, but I guess it's just like there's other forces that can drive you to keep going and um, you can love it in different ways, even if it's not just for you.